This time of year, Stuart and I really like to get up before the kids so we can have a little bit of time to set ourselves straight for the day. And when we're feeling our oats, that means actually going outside and starting a fire. And on this particular morning, we were given quite the show. At the risk of sounding slightly scary, I've always been incredibly fascinated by fire, by the way it transforms mood and environment, and of course, food. We're blessed here in the Pacific Northwest to be surrounded by cherry orchards, pear orchards, apple orchards, and what that means is we have a lot of very hot burning fruit wood for our fires. While the world spins and gets crazier by the day, I find the act of sitting by a fire that much more necessary because there's something about it that warms your body, eases your aches, and puts your mind at rest. Even the kids, as they participate in cooking breakfast over the fire, they seem to be at ease, to be calmer in themselves. And I understand that. Much like watching waves roll in on a beach or watching the stars in the night sky, a fire, completely unapologetic and consuming, is relaxing, it's grounding, it's captivating. And I find, as a home cook, that food cooked over the fire is that much more extraordinary. It tastes better, it sounds better, it looks better. If I had my way, I would do this all day, every day. But I'm by no means an expert, and there's been a lot of trial and error in learning to cook over a fire. Sometimes this fire is made outside, like you see here in our driveway, and sometimes it's made in our living room fireplace or even our kitchen fireplace. But today was such a beautiful day, we had to take it outside. One of the valuable lessons that I've learned about cooking over a fire is to allow it time to get nice and hot because you actually don't cook over fire, you cook over coals. And so starting well before you need to have the food prepared is key. Everything's a bit rougher with fire cooking. The herbs aren't chopped nearly as fine as they would be if I was cooking indoors, nor the bacon or the onions. And extra fat is always necessary to get the really good sizzle.
when I cook over a fire and I utilize the cast iron that I've collected over the years, it reminds me of why a cast iron skillet was so incredibly valuable to the pioneers that first traveled out west. They carried very few things in their wagons, and their cast iron was one of those essentials that came no matter what. Pieces like this can make it down generations. Another tip I've learned in my fire cooking is that it's equally important to have heat coming from the top as it is from the bottom. That's what ensures that your food will cook evenly from the top and the bottom at the same time, just like it would in an oven. This morning's breakfast over the fire is pear sauce and a bacon frittata. Because we'd already gone to the work of getting the fire nice and hot and getting a nice bed of coals, we figure, what the heck? Let's just do lunch out here as well. And there is hardly a meat that is more delicious grilled over a hot bed of coals than lamb. These lamb chops from our flock of Katahdin sheep are a real treat. And today we decided to smother them in a red curry sauce. You see, there really is this magical thing that happens with meat over a flame. And the fat gets seared and incredibly delicious. It takes on a flavor and a texture that's just impossible to get over a stove. Vegetables like cauliflower, cabbage, onions, tomatoes, zucchini, eggplant, peppers, anything really. All of these are so incredible when you add fire. One of my very favorite things about cooking rustic over a fire is that there's no fancy equipment. There's no French technique. There's nothing fancy about this. This is primitive. This is rustic. It's dirty and real and smelly. It hits all the senses in all the right ways. And 
then, as if we haven't had enough for the day, we take it inside. For years and years, I dreamt of having a fireplace in my house. And every time we light a fire here, still, I'm so grateful. So I can't really pretend to understand what it is that captivates me so much about a fire. I know that it works. It works on transforming the aroma of our home, transforming sour attitudes into better attitudes, transforming mediocre food into really delicious food. It changes the ambiance, it changes the feeling, it changes the temperature, and it is a gift. When the day is done and the dishes are washed, this is where we land. This isn't the time of year where we're out walking the gardens. This is the time of year where we're tucked in at home by the fire. Where else could you possibly want to be?